What is up you guys, my name is Noah and this is Tech New. Apple's homegrown Final Cut Pro 10 is a very fluid, dynamic, and versatile video editing program. Today I'm going to go over the basics on how to get you, who I assume is a beginner, started editing in this application. Now I'll tell you, when I first opened up Final Cut, I was overwhelmed with all the different windows, buttons, icons, symbols, etc. I still don't know everything there is to know about the program, and I've actually discovered more by preparing this demonstration. However, I've gotten to the point where I can really take advantage of Final Cut. I can do a variety of different things, and most importantly, produce a well-edited video. In this tutorial, I'm going to be demonstrating 10 things a beginner should know before using Final Cut Pro 10. These 10 things include knowledge of the layout, how to import media, knowledge of the tools available, how to add media to the timeline, how to add transitions, how to crop media, how to add and adjust audio, how to add filters or effects, how to add text or titles, and finally how to export your project once you're finished editing. Feel free to click on any of the annotations if you want to skip to a certain segment in this video. If you know little to nothing about Final Cut Pro 10, I recommend you watch this tutorial the whole way through. So before we do anything, I want to show you how to create a new project. So what I recommend doing, and this is just me, I always make a new event which dates things, and you can have one or two projects within it, so this kind of acts like a folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, New, Event, then I'm just going to keep it as the date, you can name it whatever you want, and then I'm going to go to File, New, Project. So you can name your project whatever you want, I'm going to call this Final Cut Tutorial. So I'm going to click OK, and then bam, you have this blank space, you have this blank canvas, and now I'm going to show you how to use Final Cut Pro 10. I'm going to be using my own vocabulary in my explanations, as I don't know Apple's official naming scheme for this specific application. So let's begin with layout. There are six what I like to call regions of Final Cut Pro 10. The first, and typically the largest, is the timeline. This is where you drop all your media and align it into a sequence that will become the video you're editing. You can see a list of all the media you have in your timeline by clicking this icon at the left hand bottom corner of the timeline. Clicking this icon at the right hand bottom corner of the timeline will allow you to adjust the appearance, style, and scale of the media icons or boxes on your timeline. You can also zoom in and out by clicking and dragging on the zoom toggle here as well as pressing Command and Plus or Command and Minus on your keyboard, or by just pinching and zooming on a Mac trackpad if you have one. We also have these four toggles at the top right hand corner. This split rectangle icon alters the way you can scroll through your timeline, either by manually clicking and dragging on the playhead or just by hovering your mouse over the sequence. This is also known as skimming. Long story short, this button enables or disables skimming. This waveform icon enables or disables audio skimming or any sound you'll hear when skimming in Final Cut. The icon with the S in the headphones silences or mutes any audio on your timeline. And the colliding boxes icon enables and disables the alignment feature otherwise known as snapping when you position media on your timeline. Snapping can be very useful at times and annoying at others so I recommend you turn it on only when needed. Next up we have what I like to call your primary media browser. This is where imported media shows up for you to select and place onto your timeline. You can change the appearance of the media icons in the primary media browser as well. You can also browse all of your events which act as folders and your projects in this window. Both events and projects are what make up your Final Cut library. You can locate your library in the Movies folder by default in macOS. Personally, I recommend you edit off of a separate external disk and not off your boot drive if you can. To the right of the primary media browser, we have the viewer. It is where you can preview your video while you are editing, and obviously without it, you would not be going anywhere. On the viewer, we have a full screen button, as well as pause, rewind, and forward buttons. And lastly, we have the Transform, Crop, and Distort toggle, which is located at the bottom left hand corner of the viewer. I use the Transform tool constantly while positioning text, photos, and video overlays on my timeline. 
And at the top right, you have an adjustment for the video window size and for video quality, which can better performance while editing. To the right of the viewer, we have the inspector window. This is the area where you can make fine adjustments to your video clips, audio, transitions, titles, effects, and more. Below the inspector window is the effects, transitions, generators, and titles browser. It's pretty self-explanatory. And last but not least, we have what I like to call the central bar. Really creative, I know. I'm going to be giving a brief description, if any, for some of the buttons on the central bar now, and then go into detail about them with their corresponding functions later. Going from left to right, we have your import icon, which brings up the import window, a place where you can import media from Finder into your primary media browser. The next three buttons, which are the two stars and the X, allow you to favorite and delete media in your primary media browser. Moving on to the key icon, this allows you to assign keywords that you may frequently use in titles to keyboard shortcuts within a final cut. I personally have never ever used this and I didn't know about this before making this video. Next we have these four icons. These are ways you can place selected media on your timeline from your primary media browser without manually clicking and dragging them onto the timeline. Like I said, I will be going into detail about some of these buttons later, so hang in there. Uh, next we have the tools button, which I'll also be going over later. And then we have what I like to call the central informational window. I don't know, I'm, I'm trying guys. This displays rendering progress, the timing of your project in frames, seconds, and hours, and then audio levels. Next we have the color correction and the audio enhancement button. Then there's the retime button, which allows you to adjust the speed and in some cases direction of your video or audio clip. Next we have the effects, photos, music, titles, and generators button. A generator is essentially just a background, by the way. You can browse for a desired element, whether a transition, title, etc., in the window below. You can also browse through photos and songs you want directly from your photos and iTunes libraries. And finally, we have the themes button, which sorts effects, transitions, titles, and generators into different categories that can help you create a certain type of project, from a documentary to a photo montage. Next is the inspector button, which brings up the inspector window. And finally, we have the share button, which allows you to export your project in a number of different ways. I will talk about this later in the video. Our next topic is how to import media into your project. There are two ways you can import media into Final Cut Pro 10. The first method is to click the import button on your central bar or go to file import. Both of these methods will bring up the import window where you can select media in Finder that you want to appear in your primary media browser. The other way is to simply just drag and drop media onto the primary media browser or directly onto the timeline from your desktop or a Finder window. Personally, I do a mixture of both. I will always import footage and voiceovers via the import window and photos by just dragging them directly into the timeline from my desktop or a finder window. The next topic is knowledge of the tools available. This is a very important aspect of Final Cut Pro. You should never have to keep clicking the tools button in order to switch from a different tool. Each tool has an assigned keyboard shortcut, which you should definitely learn to memorize. For this video, I'm going to be going over, in my opinion, the four relevant tools. These are the Select, Blade, Hand, and Range Selection tools. The Select tool functions as both the Position and Trim tools, and the Zoom tool is not that important, as there are several other Zoom functions available in this program. The Select tool allows you to select, position, and trim media on your timeline. Press A on your keyboard to use this tool. The Blade tool allows you to make precise cuts on media in your timeline. This tool is mainly used just to split clips. It can also be used to isolate or remove any unwanted segments. Press B on your keyboard to use this tool. The hand tool allows you to navigate through your timeline using the cursor by just clicking and dragging. Press H to use this tool. And finally, the range selection tool enables you to select a segment you want to copy or delete from your timeline. Press R to use this tool. Once you memorize these shortcuts, editing will become a lot less tiresome and tedious. Similarly to importing media, there are two methods to adding media to your project's timeline. The first method involves selecting media in your primary media browser and clicking one of these three buttons on the central bar. The leftmost button will place media as an overlay wherever your playhead is located. 
The middle button will place media embedded in pre-existing media on your timeline, wherever your playhead is located. And the right button will place the media at the end of your timeline. You can toggle these by pressing Q, W, and E on your keyboard. The small arrow button next to these three buttons allows you to just import exclusively video or audio from selected media. The second method is by simply just dragging media from your desktop or finder window onto the primary media browser or directly onto your timeline. You can also adjust the length or trim the video clip by selecting it and dragging from either side, inward or outward. Also, you can position any overlay, whether a photo or a video, by selecting it and then the transform tool in the viewer or the inspector window. When you want to add a transition between two video clips, you must click the transition button on the central bar and then select a desired transition in the browser. You can preview one by selecting it and then pressing space on your keyboard. Then drag the transition onto either of the clips next to the visible gap. You can resize the transition by pulling on either side of it and move it by clicking and dragging on the center of the transition. If the center is not visible, zoom in to find it. Before moving on, here's a useful tip. You can add the default cross dissolve transition by pressing command and then T on your keyboard. This is definitely a time saver, as I use the cross-dissolve transition frequently. When you want to crop a video or a photo that appears in your project, select the media you want to adjust, and either go to the viewer or the inspector window. From there you must click the crop button, and then you can adjust the media from there. Make sure you have the crop settings selected, not trim or Ken Burns. Adding audio is identical to adding video clips. Either import the audio files manually or drag them into the media browser or directly onto the timeline itself. You can adjust a clip's audio by hovering your cursor over the line above the waveform. Clicking and dragging up will increase the volume and dragging down will lower the volume. You can also adjust the volume in the inspector window under the audio tab as well as add audio enhancements such as background noise removal. You can add filters or effects by clicking on the effects window on the central bar. After browsing and finding your desired effect, which you can preview by selecting it and pressing space, drag it directly onto the clip you want to adjust. You can also make fine adjustments in the inspector window. When you want to add a title, click the title button on the central bar. You can preview a title the same way you would a transition or an effect. Select the one you want and drag it onto your timeline. You can always reposition and adjust the length of the title afterward on your project's timeline. Select the title and double click on the title in the viewer to begin typing or go to the inspector window. Once again, make sure your title is selected and make changes from there. You can change the font, scale, color, and more in the inspector window as well. You can also position the title by selecting the transform tool in the viewer or by using the transform adjustments in the inspector window. Another useful tip. You can add the default plain title by pressing Ctrl T on your keyboard. Your title will appear wherever your playhead is at on the timeline. And finally, last but definitely not least, I'll show you how to export your project once you're done editing. You can either click the share button on the central bar and then click master file. Another method is going to file, share, and then master file. And the last method is just pressing command and E on your keyboard. All three of these methods will bring up the share window. You can edit your project name in the info tab and change the format, codec, and other options in the settings tab. I personally export in the H.264 codec. This compresses the video size compared to Apple's ProRes codec, which retains very high quality, but at the same time produces huge video files, which you don't really want. The fidelity is not worth it, and videos exported in H.264 will look great regardless of any small loss of quality due to data compression. If you plan on uploading to YouTube like I do, the H.264 codec is the way to go. Once you've finished, press the next button, select where you want to save your video, and then click save. You can then monitor the rendering progress in the central informational window that I was talking about earlier. And there you have it. That's a taste of what it's like to edit in Final Cut Pro 10. I really encourage you to leave me a comment if you have any questions. I also want to add that the only way you can get good at using this program is by messing around with it yourself. That's what I did, as well as watching numerous tutorials. Figuring things out by yourself and problem solving while video editing will help you understand this program further. I really hope this video helped you out, and please smash the like button if you like this video, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm really hoping to hit 1000 subs by the end of this summer. Expect my 5 reasons to avoid Max video in the near future. 
If you haven't watched my 5 reasons you should buy a Mac video, I'll leave a link at the end of the video and down in the description. And other than that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.